Hey everybody, welcome back to Knowledge Work Nexus. I am Kara. Today we're going to be taking a look at all of the uh, different multi-layer planning templates that I use, as well as a peek inside my iPad to the planner that I'm using on GoodNotes this year. I like to use all of these planners together as a means of just helping me keep on top of everything and keep track of everything. So we're here in my vault. I've just been reconfiguring my vault for the new year, and I thought this would be a good time to show you this. We're going to take a look at each of my periodic notes templates. I do use the periodic notes plugin, and we're going to start at the top with the yearly template and work our way down to the daily template. So you'll see the template that makes this page, today's daily note page, in a minute. I'm going to focus on this video on the why and the what, and then I've got another video coming out in about a week about how to build all the templates. You can get all of my templates and videos a week earlier than when they come on Medium. I'll put information in the description below about how to join my community. So let's take a look at my yearly template. A lot of my templates, not all of them, use some text expander snippets. So if I come over here to text expander and I go into Obsidian and I go to my year, let's see, where's it? Right here, you'll see here's one example of them. This is the one that's at the end of my yearly note. And then I also have this little planning calendar that I put into my actual notes. Let me show you what that looks like in reality when we come into my Kronos folder and go to 2024 and open up my 2024 note. This is what it looks like in reality. Not much excitement with it yet because there's nothing really in it yet that's working because I haven't set up the quarters. It's We're not quite there yet. We're not quite to January, but... Uh, I'll be doing that over the next few weeks. So you'll see that a little bit in a little more detail in the how video. I thought that gives you a nice balance between the two. So let's go back to my yearly note template. There we go. And then I'll fill in what my word of the year for uh, this year. It's manifest wellness. It's actually a theme for the year. So I'll edit that in the template. And then I have my 12 favorite problems. This is a transcluded note from a full note. This is just pulling in the current heading. I also have any of my past lists. So anytime I update the list, I'll just copy and paste the whole list down below and then I'll edit whatever I want to edit. The one question I think I changed this year is this one that how do I know when I'm being successful? This is an idea I got, I think, from the Bookworm podcast. So I'm interested to work on this and kind of figure this out. And then I know some other workbooks that I may do during the year and I'll put a link like to the Dropbox or the Google Drive folder where they're stored if I decide to do that this year. And then I'll make a vision board for this year. I think I'm going to make my vision boards in Canva this year. I was going to try to make them in Excaladraw. I love Excaladraw. It's an amazing tool. But I have a lot of images preloaded into Canva. So I think it may just be easier to work with. And then I'll just drag the images in here to share. And then another feature you'll see in almost all of my, I think in actually all of my planning templates, my periodic notes planning templates, are a little checklist of things that need to be done as a result of going through that template. So I have a project health template, a taxes template. I have a yearly folder structure. I can go ahead and show you that because I have actually set that up. So here's my yearly folder structure. And what I do is in my monthly template, I have a reminder to move the previous month's notes into their proper folder. So I move the week and the day notes. The only thing that stays out in the main folder is the year and the quarters. So it just keeps it a little bit cleaner at the end of the year and it's a little easier to find things when I'm looking for them. And of course, with Obsidian, all of the notes get updated, which is nice. And then a reminder that I need to go uh, change my quick action, my shortcut to look at the new year folder in Kronos. And if you're not sure what that is, I have a video on it, or no, I have an article on that and I'll link to it in the description below as well. And then I put in my 24 for 24 lists. Again, let me pop over here and let me show you what that looks like. So this is a transclude of another note that's in my uh, vault, actually two other notes that are in my vault. So I've got my 24 for 24 lists and then my reading life plans, which I haven't written yet, and my write 24 and 24 goals, which I haven't written yet, but those will all show up here when it's done. I think I'll stay here since the monthly themes are of interest. I do a happiness project courtesy of Gretchen Rubin every year, and I usually do mine just a little bit different than she does because the months fit a little bit differently for me. Since my I have cancer and I'm dealing with that right now, I have a lot of things that are focusing on my body and my health and my energy level. Just with where my treatments are going to be at this year, I thought these were good places to focus on that. And uh, planning on throwing a big party in October this year because I'll celebrate a milestone birthday 
And we're finally going to celebrate moving into our new house. And hopefully all my cancer treatments will be done by then. So looking forward to celebrating in October this year. Hopefully we'll celebrate a lot before that too. And then these, this year at a glance section here, I actually changed this in my template. So let me go back to that. At least I think I did. Yes. So you'll notice here, I changed this out to that OBS year text expander snippet. Go back to that one somewhere here. There it is. So that this will fill this in. It just makes it a little bit faster. I just type the year one time, 2024 in this case, and fills in the entire thing for me. Let's see, this is the template, but I've already done that in the, in the calendar. So what this will do is it'll pull in a transcluded note from each of the months showing the highlights, and then it'll also pull in something from my quarters. So let's go ahead and look at the quarterly notes templates now. So you can see that. So again, I'll add in that navigational calendar, the big one using that text expander snippet. If you don't have text expander, you could do this with Keyboard Maestro, or I think there's one called Rocket Type, maybe if you're a setup subscriber. But there are lots of these different text expander tools that you can use. Any of them would work for what I'm doing here. If you keep watching next week when I do the how, I'll share my text expander snippets with you so that you don't have to start from scratch and you don't have to build those. Again, I've got my check boxes to set up my plan. Then I go through a quarterly planning process each quarter. And uh, I have a whole workbook on that in my community. It's free. But these are the places where I fill in some of the information from that. The tables, the changes they've made to tables in Obsidian make this so much nicer to do. I love it so much now. It's so easy. And so I'll bring all of those in. And then this is the intentions and outcomes section that will roll up to that annual annual template. From there, we go to my monthly template. So it'll fill in the month and the year automatically. Again, that navigational calendar. This is mainly just concerned with the month itself so I can jump around between the weeks. My monthly tasks that I have to do and then I'll put in intentions and another vision board. I do those monthly. Sometimes I even do them still old school on paper and with paper and uh, markers and pens or magazine cutouts or whatever I feel like at the time. And then I fill in the month. I just go through my calendar quickly and highlight all the big milestone things, mostly the things that I'll write on my print calendar as, as well, just so I have them in here. And then I can I have a section for planned and then I have a section for actual, which is nice to see how plans change over the year. And then another text expander snippet that pulls in a bunch of the weekly note details. So this pulls in my intention for the week, my plus minus and next and my summary for each week. So that way, when I'm looking at my monthly templates, I can actually look at the summation of the weeks in one place, and then I can make some physical notes to myself here if I want to on how that month went. These all roll up to the year um, and to the quarter. So it's nice to be able to see that in those different places. From there, we go to the weekly notes template. And this is really what I think of as the heart and soul of my system. Um, again, all of this gets filled in automatically. I tend to make a, a good note on the periodic notes template, and I'll go through all this in the how video um, in a week or so. But a, a good note on this is that you want to create these using the command P and the periodic notes template makers. The weekly and the daily, though, can be created. The weekly and the daily can be created from here. So if I want to create next week's weekly template, I can do that right here and just hit create, and that'll automatically create it for me. I notice now I can go to my 2024 year. Week one is now highlighted. So that's a really nice way to do that. I usually don't create these more than a week in advance. And that way I'm not getting anything too far out if I want to update my template or anything like that. Let's go back to our weekly template. Actually, I'm going to show you from here. This will be fine. I do a quick brain dump the way I have my tasks set up in Obsidian. Anything that doesn't get checked off here will show up in my available tasks so I can work on those. Agendas or transcludes for my daily notes again. Let me show you what that looks like in an active template. So this is a pretty quiet week, but I do have all of my notes in here about things that are going on, my tasks that are happening, all of these things. So you can see all of that there. And then I can go ahead and prepare and review for next week. I've already created my weekly note for next week. Yay, that's done. And then I can see all my different highlights in here. Oh, I didn't fill any in for Wednesday. That happens sometimes. Either there wasn't anything really significant in such a quiet week. And I could really review my logs to see what is going on there. And again, all of these tasks and things will get picked up by the task management system on a regular basis. 
And then I would come in and I would fill in what the positives, the negatives, and what I want to take into next week and my weekly summary. And again, all those roll up to the month. So it's a, a nice way to see that. And finally, you've already gotten a preview of my daily note, but let's go ahead and look at the daily note. And we'll actually look at it on today's daily note. I think that's more interesting. So again, I've got this little calendar view here that I can look at so I can go back and forth between my notes. So if I want to look at yesterday and then I can go back even another day, tomorrow and tomorrow. There we go. This is from Mike Schmitz. I've got a link in the description below if you want to check that out. It's in his, it's, I can't remember if it's in the faith-based productivity community or the Obsidian University community. I think it's in the faith-based productivity community how he makes his daily notes. And this is something, if you take his class, you can get this little time progression thing, which is fun to see. And then I have my daily tasks. I'm not in love with this section, but it does remind me of the things I've committed to for myself to do every single day. And then today's focus area, I didn't get a good night's sleep last night. So, um, and I'm trying to get my video out today. And you can see all of the things that need to get done today from projects. Some of them are overdue, some of them are available. And then my log where I log things. And I have a shortcut that I use for that. I think I've already said this, but I'll put the link to the article down below so you can see that. And then at the end, you'll see the task that got completed today and all the pages that I've edited today. Oh, this is because this fault needed to sync. So there's a ridiculous amount of notes down there. I will not scroll all the way through that. But anyway, that is a quick look at my template. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look over at my iPad and I'll show you what I do there. And then I'll be back in just a minute to finish off the video. Hey everybody. So now we're here in my iPad and we're in the GoodNote app. And you can see right here on the top left, I have the 2024, I call it the Hobonichi style or the Jibun Tattoo style planner. Um, so let me go ahead and show you that. So if I click on this, it will typically open to the last page that I was on. So we'll go back here to the home screen. And this is the navigation that you have with this planner. You can uh, jump to months using the month view comb here. You can jump to a specific week using the week numbers. You can see I've started to fill some things in on it. And you can jump to a specific day. I don't think I have anything filled in on that day yet. I just, I was playing with some of the stickers that came around one of the sticker books with it. So just seeing if I like any of those and want to use any of those. So there are two parts to this planner. There are a couple of parts to this planner. First of all, oops, down. On the home screen, I can jump to any of these areas. So I can jump to, she's got a bunch of lists in here and a bunch of different areas you can check out. And I've got meal planners. I actually use any list for my meal planning. I've got a video on an article coming up on that in the near future. Your finances, which I'm going to be running a finance jumpstart course in my community in February. So be sure to join the community and sign up for that. And some of these other trackers. I'm experimenting with the work planner a little bit. I'm I'm going to, I'm going to, I think, put some things in here just to keep track of clients and projects and things like that. So I've got some thoughts on that. And then she also has, this is one of the things that made me go to this particular planner is the note section. She has 50 different linked notebooks in here. So if I go to annual planning, it'll take, to, take me to all my annual planning lists and I'm using links to jump out to those if I want to see them. Um, she's also got in here, I'm assuming the designer is a she. The name makes me think that. All different sorts of special paper that I can create in a bunch of her different templates that are already in here. So if I want to make multiple 100 things lists, I've always got that template available to me that I can check out. So lots of really great resources in here. And I just love this planner. I love the look of it. And I'm excited to start using it for this year. So what I will typically do in a given week, if we come over here to this first week of January, oops, I want to go back to the week. There we go. If I come over here to this first week of January, I will fill in my calendar and my to-do lists in here. I don't actually use the numbers. So like uh, for January the 4th, I know I have a, make this a little bit bigger, uh, 10 a.m. creative work hour. And I would just copy these out of my fantastic cow. And at 11, I have a client call. I would fill in who the actual client was if I wasn't doing this as a demo. And then at one o'clock, I have another client call. And on that day, my couch is getting delivered. That is not delivered. Let's try that one more time. There you go. 
and I need to pick up a box at the grocery store. So you can see there are all of my things and I would continue that for the entire week. And then each night I will come in and fill in the daily note for that day. So if I want to jump to the fourth, I would fill in that. And on this one, I actually do use the agenda piece. On that one, I would fill it in as 10 a.m. is creative work hour. And then I fill in that specific client call. And another specific client call. And I would fill in who the actual clients were, but don't need to see that for the week. So that is how I do this on paper, which I'm using air quotes around. And then I transfer this into my Obsidian Vault as well. Hope that's helpful just to see how they play together. For me, it's nice to have the paper because this is what I'm looking at. I keep it on a stand by my desk most of the day. And so I can look at it at any time while I'm moving around in my Obsidian Vault. So I hope that's giving you a nice idea of what my multi-layer planning system looks like and that you found some inspiration in this. As I always say, it's, it's not about doing it my way. It's just about seeing if there's anything in my way that might be helpful to you. And I do hope that you will check out my uh, next video in a week or so with the how of how I did all this. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks.